music. And so you see this lit place and then you see this rock, uh, pride rock, I believe it's called, in, in the middle of it. And it's the center, it's the center. It's like the spot that's marked by a cathedral, which is an X or a cross, and you're right in the middle of that. And so it's the center of the light. That's another way of thinking about it. Or it's the center of the territory, it, or it's the home, or it's the fire in the, in the wilderness, or it's the tree in the center where you live. It's all of those things at once. It's inhabited territory with you at the center. And the, the rock represents tradition because people tend to inscribe their traditions on rock, right? Or to, to build them into rock like the pyramids. So you could think about that as a pyramid, as an Egyptian pyramid, and it's the right way to think about it. You could also think about it as a dominance hierarchy with the apex predator at the top, and that's the lion. So it makes sense that the lion would be in the light on the rock. That's a pyramid in the middle of the territory, right? That makes sense to people psychologically. So, because that's what the state is. The state is a hierarchy with, with something at the top that occupies a space that has been illuminated and made safe by consciousness. That's what the state is. And that's all represented right away in this movie. And all the animals come to, to observe what's happening in the pyramid and at the top because they need to know what happens as, at the top, partly to organize their world, that's the pyramid, but also to see how the organizational principle works. And that's why they're all gathering. And so they're gathering in the light in the morning to observe something new that's going to be born that's of significant importance, and that's the birth of the hero. And this little bird here, uh, Zazu, right? Zazu is like Horus, the Egyptian god, who was a falcon and an eye at the same time. And he is the king's eye in this king's eyes in this movie, right? He flies up above outside of the pyramid so he can see everything that goes on and reports to the king. And so partly what that indicates is that the thing that's at the top of the pyramid needs to be an eye. And that's partly why you see an eye on the top of the pyramid on the back of the American dollar bill. It's exactly the same idea. Or if you look at the Washington Monument, which is a pyramid at the top, you see that it's capped with aluminum. And you think, well, why aluminum? And the answer to that was it was the most expensive metal at that time. And so the notion is, is that at the top of the pyramid, there's something that actually doesn't belong in the pyramid. It's something that goes up above the pyramid and can see everything. And so you could think about it this way, is that you're going to be in a lot of pyramids in your life, dominance hierarchies and, and different states and families and all of that. And they'll arrange themselves into a hierarchy and there'll be something at the top. And the top is the thing that can do well across hierarchies. So it's not stuck in any one pyramid, it's, and it's partly associated with vision and the ability to see a long, long distance. Also to see what you don't want to see and to report that back to the king. And so the king, fundamentally, as far as you guys are concerned from a psychological perspective, that's your superego, that's the Freudian perspective, or it might be the moral system by which you comport yourself. But your eyes are the thing that updates that, right? You need it to orient yourself in the world. You need it to orient yourself among other people. But your eye and your capacity to pay attention, especially to what you don't want to pay attention to, is the thing that continually updates that model, exactly as Piaget laid out with children. So, and all of that's packed into the imagery in the first you know, few minutes of this movie. And that's actually why it re relies on imagery, why this isn't just a lecture by a psychologist, you know, when you go to see the movie. It's because the images, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, but and there's thousands of pictures in this movie, obviously, but maybe a picture is worth more words than you can actually use to describe it if the picture is, is, is profound enough. And we have many, many pictures like that. Any deeply symbolic picture is virtually inexhaustible in terms of its, of, uh, semantically, with regards to its explanation. Images are very, very dense. So anyways, the animals all gather. Now, the animals are also id representations from the Freudian perspective, and the id is the part of your psyche from the Freudian perspective that's animalistic and, and, and full of, of, of implicit drives, sexual and aggressive in particular, as far as Freud was concerned. And that's because those two drives, say, unlike thirst or hunger, are much more difficult to integrate into proper social being and tend to be excluded and left unconscious. And so a lot of Freudian psychology, and I would say psychology in general, is focused on the integration of sexual impulses and aggressive impulses into the psyche. I would also add to that anxiety, because anxiety is also a major problem, anxiety and, and 
negative emotion that's pain-like is also a major problem for people. And so the animals represent those id-like impulses that have to be organized hierarchically before you can become an integrated being in precisely the Piagetian manner, right? Because Piaget would say, well, the child comes into the world with reflexes and maybe a more modern psychologist would also con concentrate on the implicit motivations and those have to be organized inside the child into some kind of hierarchy of unity before the child can organize him or herself into the broader unity of the state and that's basically what's being represented here and so so Zazu the eyes of the king comes to check out the king and that's uh, what's his name what's the king's name Mufasa, yeah, and he's, he's a very regal-looking person, uh, lion, and he stands up straight and tall, and that means that he's high in serotonin because serotonin governs postural flexion, and if so, if you're dominant and near the top of hierarchies, you tend to expand so that you look bigger than, than you could if you shrunk down, and so if you're a low-dominant person, you wander around like this so that you look small and weak, and you don't pose a threat to anybody, but if you're at the top, you expand yourself so that you can command the space, and that's why he has that particular kind of regal posture. And if you look at his facial expression, you see that it's quite severe. It, like, he's, he's capable of kindness, but he's also harsh and judgmental, and that's what society is like. That's what the superego is like, and what that means is that he's integrated his aggression. And I've seen this happen in my clinical clients. When they come in and they're too agreeable, they look like Simba looks later in the movie when he's an adolescent, and He's sort of like a deer in the headlights. Everything is coming in and nothing is coming out. But when the person integrates their shadow and gets the aggressive part of themselves integrated into their personality, their faces harden. And if you look at people, you can tell because the people who are too agreeable look childlike and innocent and the people who, well, a hyper aggressive person will look, you know, mean and cruel. But uh, let's see if that's good. That's still working. So, uh, but I've seen people's face changes, change face change in the course of therapy, uh, men and women. So, and what happens is they start to look more mature and it's, it's more like they're, they're judging the world as well as interacting with it properly once they integrate that more disagreeable part of them. It's very, very necessary. And that's part of the incorporation of the Jungian shadow or the incorporation of the unconscious from a Freudian perspective. But old Musa Musafa there, he's already got that. Uh, he's already got that covered. So, and he's capable, like, obviously he can smile and he's full, capable of the full range of expressions, but he's a tough looking character. And, and 